Hi, welcome to the first video of Be an Amazing Writing Teacher, and I'm hoping to produce a lot of these for you. Um, they're just going to be short little videos with ideas, mini lessons, tips, strategies, things that my kids have found to be fun um, in my classroom. Uh, I hope to share these in a way that you'll be able to use them directly in your classroom right away when I do writing workshops and sessions at um, conferences and events. I always have teachers tell me that their toolbox is full now and they can't wait to get started. So I hope you'll feel that way too. Um, I'm going to start by sharing something I do every year when I'm working on personal narratives. So any kind of narrative story writing, the beginnings for those. So I have a whole thing that I, that I do at the very beginning of the lesson that I'll share in another video, but I'm going to cut straight to um, what I do when we're specifically getting ready to practice writing a good beginning for a story. So I start by talking to them about, with me as an author, what I do, because I struggle with this too. So sometimes I'll have a great idea for a story. I'll know who the characters are going to be. I'll know who the what the problem's going to be. I, know, I even know how they're gonna solve it. But sometimes I just don't know how I wanna start the story. So I stare at that screen or that blank page and wonder, gosh, how am I gonna, what would be an effective beginning? Because you know how important the hook is for your story. So what I do as an author is I will take a stack of books, I'll take a stack of my favorite picture books, um, and I'll just read the beginning sentence or two, and that's it. So my brain is only thinking of beginnings. And as I'm reading those, I'll read the first sentence or two, I'll make a note, okay, what did that author do and why was it effective? Why did that work so well? And, um, and then once I've gone through, you know, maybe 10 or 12 books, my brain is starting to percolate some ideas about, hmm, maybe for my beginning, I could do part of this and part of this and combine it. Or I really like how this author did this, but I could do it with my characters and put my own twist on it. And so it really seems to help. And so that's why I wanted to share this with you. So I have a few books that I keep standard in my file folder, in my file drawer of writing ideas that is strictly for beginning purposes. And these are my mentor texts that I use. So the first one is Verdi. And it's a great one because it's also good to use for endings, which will be in the second video. So I'll start out and I'll talk to the kids about my whole scenario about what I do when I'm trying to find a beginning and then I do it with them. So I'll have a fresh anchor chart on the wall, nice and empty. I'm not using the one from last year. It's more effective to do it with them. And so I have a blank anchor chart and it's just gonna say beginnings. And then I read a beginning. So. On a small tropical island, the sun rose high above the steamy jungle. And then I'll ask the kids, so what did that author use? What did they do to um, introduce you to something? What do you now know because you've heard the beginning? And someone will tell me that that was the setting. And I'm like, yes, so we could be introduced to the setting. And I'll write that up there on the anchor chart that the setting is a way you could begin your story. Okay, so how about this one? So this is Vulture and Hummingbird. This is one of my books. And it starts out, Vulture's favorite pastimes were branch testing and grumbling. Hummingbird zipped around all day looking for things to add to his happy list. Now what did I use as a beginning in this story? What do you now know because you've heard the beginning? And of course the kids are gonna say, you know the characters. Yes, we know the personalities of the characters. So I'll write up on my chart, characters. Okay, how about this one? This is too many toys. Spencer had too many toys. They covered the floor of his bedroom and piled up in his closet. So what did we just find out in the beginning of this story? What did the author tell us right away? Of course, they told us the problem in the story, which the kids would disagree that having too many toys, that is not a problem. But we write up there, problem. You can introduce the story with a problem and then we wanna know how are they gonna solve that problem? So it's a great hook. Okay, here's a classic for you, Charlotte, Charlotte's Web. And of course it starts, where's Papa going with that ax? And so what did this author start us with? Well, they started us with a question and that hooks us right in too because we wanna know, wait a minute, why does he have an ax? What is he going to do with that ax? And so it's a great way to start a story as well. So I'll write up there, question. Okay, bridge to Cherubithia. Baroom, 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 barippity, barippity, barippity. Good, his dad had the pickup going. 
Now, what is that when an author uses sound like that? That was really fun. It got my attention right away, and I'm wondering what's going on, and it kind of put me there. And then they'll say, well, that's um, onomatopoeia. And I always have someone, of course, look it up to help me spell it up on the chart, and we talk about that. Okay, I'll just give one more example. You kind of get the idea. But this one is from me first, Helen Lester. Pinkerton was pink, plump, and pushy. Well, this is called alliteration. And sometimes the kids will know the term for that. I had third graders. So sometimes they'll know the specific term and sometimes that's a teachable moment where you get to tell them what that means when you start. Some of them will, some of them will say like tongue twister. So then I'll write up alliteration. So what we do from there is we talk about the ones that we found and I do more books than that, but for the purposes of this video, I don't wanna keep you too long. So, um, so we have this nice chart. We have all these different ways that these authors have effectively began their stories. And then I'll have the kids go back to their seats and they have to look at the self-selected reading book they have at their own seats and look to see what did their author use as the beginning of the story. And then before you know it, they're all chattering and they're, they can't wait to share um, what their author did for the beginning of their story. So that is one way that they're seeing this is real. These are real authors doing this and it's even happening in my own story. And they didn't even really pay attention to that before. And that's a big thing that we need to make sure we do as teachers is draw attention to author motivation and the thinking behind the writing and always connecting. When we're doing reading, we're connecting to the writing and we're doing writing, we're connecting to the reading. And, um, and so then for my practice that day, all I'm going to have them do is pick three beginnings from the chart, and maybe there are 10 or 12 up there, and they need to come up with a topic off of their idea um, idea page. And I have several different idea pages and things to generate ideas, which I will put in another video for you. But they'll have to take one of those ideas, use that same idea, but use three different beginnings because I wanna get them in the habit of trying something several times and then choosing what they feel like is the most effective or what worked the best instead of always going with the first thing that comes to their head and thinking that they're always done after a first try at something. Um, we definitely wanna teach them um, the endurance that it takes and what revision is all about. And so by starting them out, by trying things in multiple ways right away, you're kind of starting that habit for them. So for instance, if they wanted to choose character setting an onomatopoeia as their beginning and their topic is their pet sheep on their farm, then they can um, do a different beginning using those three types and write about those. And then what I'm doing is I'm going around and looking to see what people are doing, giving suggestions, spelling things for them and all of that and spotting good examples. And at the end, um, I'll let each student maybe share one, maybe their favorite beginning that they generated off of our list using their own topics and then save everything. I always put everything um, in they have them put everything in their writing folder because we're going to come back to that sometime and that's going to have the pump already primed next time we want to write something and I can tell them choose one of those beginnings that we wrote way back in the first couple weeks of school and then they have something already started and it doesn't feel um, as hard or as overwhelming because part of the story is already finished. So that is my tip for you for writing good beginnings and um, the next video is going to be on writing endings and it relates directly to um, what we just did today. So I hope that you enjoy these and um, you know this is my first time really doing much with YouTube because in the past I've only used YouTube to kind of be my storage so my phone doesn't explode with all of the videos I take in my classroom and with my family. So um, this is going to be a new experience for me but I would love it if you would subscribe because I am trying to um, push myself and challenge myself to do this because one of my things that I love, like Maya Angelou says, if you learn something, teach it. And if you get something, give it. And I just always had that in my blood. And I just want to share with you the different ideas that have worked in my classroom. Um, there was a time for four years that I was a writing coach and I loved that. And so this is my chance to kind of do that again. The only reason I stopped doing it was because I missed having a classroom too. And so I got back into the classroom. But um, I hope you will. I hope you will subscribe and like this, and refer it to other people that might um, need some writing ideas. I'd be happy um, if you shared it all over the place. So again, thanks a lot, and I hope you'll watch the next one. Bye.